Hey everyone, so this is the first video in the Lion and the Bat series for the duel between Lionel Johnson and Conrad Kurz. I'm sure I've pronounced both those names wrong. So the first video is going to be the base, as you can currently see on screen. So the plinth is from Tarot Model Maker, I think the name is. Um, you can find him on Instagram. The basin stuff that I'm using is... Uh, the plastic card is all from Green Stuff World. The concrete and debris is mostly from Juwila Scenics. Uh, they're really good. They've got some really good stuff. If you want to do some nice basing, you need to check them out. And then the rest of it is just scatter stuff, um, heresy stuff that I've had left over from old heresy projects, old Primark bases. Um, if the video is helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you want anything commissioned, like a centerpiece model, feel free to get in touch. Or more importantly, I do offer tuition services in person and online. So give me a message in the links below and I can help you out. So first thing we need to do as it's a duel, we need to set the position of the models um, and more importantly, their interactions with each other. Now, the issue here is I didn't want to convert the Primarchs and their heads are in a very set position on the models. So there's only so much that I can do without altering the models. Um, so in this case, I chose to put them just basically directly facing each other with their heads looking at each other. So it's nice and simple. But the big issue that we have is the lion is much larger than Kurz. So we need to elevate him in this case. Um, and then as you can see on screen, because I need to remove the models to base the the actual scene, um, I'm just scoring a line on the plinth, um, and the line is just to tell me the position of the models, like the direction of their feet, just so I can refer back to it quickly when I'm building the rest of the base. Um, and I'm also putting a letter so I don't forget which model's going on which side. Right, so first thing we need to do is set the position of the lion so we know where he's going to stand but the problem is he is standing perfectly flat so that means this section of the base has to be flat um, and that can cause a lot of issues because flat bases aren't very interesting or they can be more exciting and i don't want that and because curse has to be elevated and his feet are at an angle um, it complicates things further so the first thing that i'm going to do is section off with a piece of corrugated plaster card where the lion's going to stand and I'm going to glue it on and then cut it to shape so no matter what happens I always know this section of plaster card is where the lion's going to go and I want to avoid putting too much detail on it so it doesn't interfere with his placement So it's probably a good point here to show that actually I'm really not being careful. I'm not I'm not being precise with my cuts. Um, I don't even have a ridiculously clear plan on what this is going to look like at this stage. It's just one side's going to be flat, one side's going to be elevated for curves, and then I'm going to bring those parts of the model together. I mean, the plastic card you can see, I'm gluing it on, and then I'm just big pair of scissors cutting around the plinth because all the excess I can trim down later because I'm probably going to have to clean the edge of the base um, to get a nice finish anyway so I'm not overly worried at this stage it's just about sketching out the shapes um, and the overall look of the base So you can see that I've grabbed out all of the bits of plaster card. Um, I decided here that I, I wanted another level to the, blade, the base. So ultimately the aim now is I'm going to kind of put three levels. I'm going to have the level where the line is sitting. And then I'm going to have the top level, which is where Kurz is going to be in position. And then there's going to be kind of a middle level. So I'm going to add some pipes here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to add some pipes just going randomly across the base. 
Um, and then I'm probably going to cover half of them. So there's, um, you have the pipes bare and open, and then you have another floor level with a different textured corrugated plaster card, just because that way it's just adds a little bit more interest. It doesn't make the base so boring because especially with a jewel, um, with a base this big, there's a lot of bare empty space um, and you kind of try need to aim to try and tell a story with it even if it's just something as simple as the location that they're fighting. So I'm just going back here and I'm checking my positioning again. I want to make sure that as I build this up that I still have space and I still have the models themselves in the right positions or I can still put them in the right positions. Um, remember the base, although it looks great and it's really important because it effectively frames your scene or it frames your single miniature, whatever you're doing, um, you need to make sure that at all times you're not going to lose the context of, in this case, the fight. I'm not going to lose the interaction between the two. So you can see clearly what I'm going for now. So the pipes are going to be out in the open there and then the pipes themselves are just going to support the second layer of plaster card. Um, I'm just going to sit it on top and that's going to give me my alternate level. So because I've got open pipes and then I'm going to have the floor on top of them, it kind of gives me three different surfaces already. And then the black triangle that you see is where the rubble is going to be for curves to stand on. So the base is going to end up having four different surfaces, four different levels. Um, but by the time we add all the details, the scatter terrain, it should tie them all together. Right, so these are the concrete slabs from Juila Scenics. Now, I absolutely love these. So these particular ones are the windowed variant. Um, and the reason for that is, is because half of it has no wire mesh on the inside. So when you crumble them up, you get this really great looking um, rubble, you get lots of different shapes, lots of sharp angles, um, and as you do it, it gives you a huge amount of size variation, all the way down from effectively dust to larger chunks, and then when you get to the wire, you can break up those bits of what we're aiming for concrete, I guess, um, and then pull the wire apart so it's all hanging out, um, and you can even break these concrete slabs, but have them still um, connected to the wire so it's almost like you can have floating bits of concrete uh, and it looks really good really really good bit of scenery probably my favorite thing to get right so this is filler time so I want to build up the shape of the rubble but I also don't want any sharp angles with it so in this case I've just got a big chunk of milli putt um, it's not actually enough I'm gonna add some more later uh, and the idea is I want to stick it to the plinth and I want to build up a kind of rough shape of a mound, of a pile of rubbish, debris, um, whatever you want to be. It doesn't matter in the slightest how sharp or how sh how what the shape's like, what's the exterior look like. It's just there to add bulk. Um, so at this point, 
Uh, I've nicked some pieces off of the Primark bases. I've got no idea where the Space Marine comes from, but it's one of the Primark bases. Um, I'm gluing them onto the plastic card where the lion's going to stand, but I've checked and it's not going to interfere with the lion's position. I've also pushed his head into the millie putt, so what we'll probably find is that he's going to be partially recessed. Um, his body is going to be submerged in parts of rubble. Um, and this is the part where now that I've got the millie putt down, I'm, the focus is purely getting Kurz into the right position and getting him so his feet are level. Can't stress this enough. If you're doing a really nice model, make sure the feet have proper contact with the base. There's nothing worse when you have a look at a competition piece model or a display piece model and the model doesn't actually contact with the base properly. It's a really big problem. It's something that stands out um, and it will hold you back. So at the moment, I'm just going to start building up rubble into this milli part. Basically anything that I think that might look good. And the whole time I'm thinking about how I'm going to get curves into the right position, the right elevation, um, and get those contact points for the feet absolutely perfect. You can clearly see there's no rhyme or rhythm to this. I'm just adding bits um, and building it up to what I think might look good. Um, now I saw this guy as I was working on it. This is one of the solar auxilia, I think they're called in Heresy, um, off of Kurz's base and the position was just too good uh, not to. So his leg hangs really nicely over the plastic piping and his back sits quite nicely on the plastic card. Now, something to bear in mind that is still it's not made for this base so there's still a gap underneath him so what i would probably suggest and i'm going to show you is get the leg in the best position because that's going to be the hardest one to hide and then on the flat just glue him down and then we can hide that later with rubble um, and details around him but yeah so there's there's no clear plan with this you want to in my opinion you want to keep a certain amount of randomness um just because it needs to be random. If you have a really clear plan, what ends up happening is you kind of end up getting patterns and it looks very fake or artificial. Um, and it's, it's really simple because if, if something doesn't look right, you can just add to it or take it away or cover it up. Um, I don't even understand where some of these ideas have come from. Like I've got no idea. I've put three kind of broken posts um, in the center of it. I've got no idea what they would be or why they would be there. Um, at this stage, I've got no idea why I've gr I've stuck two random bits of block in the middle of the section where the lion's going to stand, but I can bring it together later. Again, it's just a random piece of circular pipe that I'm going to stick into the millie part here, cut and then leave hanging out. All that matters is that you integrate it all together, that it all looks like it is supposed to be together at the end. And that unfortunately is always going to happen in the last five or 10 minutes of making a display base or making a really nice base. So you just need to be brave. If something looks really weird, don't worry about it. You can always change it later, but go with it, see how it comes out. As long as you're, everything you're putting on the base sticks to the theme you have in mind, you're not going to have any issues at all. It will come together at the end. So this is quite an important point. Um, you can see here there's a bit of plastic card. It looks like a railing is, is the shape or a railing, a girder. I don't know what you'd call it, but basically I'm cutting into it and then I'm just flicking chunks out of it. The point of this is I want it to look worn, damaged, broken, twisted. Um, 
you need to think about what you're putting on your base and how it sits within that theme. Is everything going to be nice um, and clean? Is it going to be battered? Is it going to be damaged? Um, and and make it so it fits. So, but you can also you can also throw some curveballs in there. So with the girder um, and with those weird square posts later on, um, I'm going to take big chunks out of them and so it's going to be really quite extreme almost like they're quite soft metal but actually with the metal pipes that come out i'm not going to add any scratches or marks to them the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to make those look worn with paint the reason why i'm going to do that is because weathering something with paint and taking physical chunks out of something it just gives you two different surfaces so it just makes again it's, it's adding a little bit of interest um little details like that will really make it but yeah so Keep in mind the theme of what you're doing. Does the surface or does the result you're putting in match the overall scheme of things? And if not, change it. So we've got some more, so we got some more um, debris bits here. So these are, I'm not even sure where I got the cogs and that from. But the we've got like cogs, wheels, gears, um, and there's some crushed up barrels uh, in the top right. Those are from Jewelry Scenic Scenics again. Um, I just kind of feel like I'm missing. I need some bigger details on this base right now. So I'm thinking a barrel in the middle would look good. Um, you can also see right now that I'm playing with three concrete slabs. So I've got one of them stuck down already i'm set with that so basically this is me trying to set a frame for curves now he's actually really difficult because his feet are in a really stupid position and that's not me bagging on simon egan or anything like that because the sculpt's lovely um and it fits perfectly with his base but when you cut him off his base you got one foot that sits at one angle and the other one that sits at a weird angle so that makes it challenging to solve that problem with getting him to sit flush um, and you'll see how I do it shortly but for now so we've got three concrete slabs that I'm basically going to glue on top of each other now they are those Jewelry Scenics ones again so you can see like the top one has um, a floating bit where it's still hanging on to the wire mesh on the inside so again it's adding interest it's also adding even more levels it's not just he's standing on a pile of rubble he's standing on um, because it's slabs on slabs it kind of looks like multiple levels again the thing with this as well is the as you can see with the base it's quite flat on one side there's not too much and with Kurz's side you have this huge pile of rubble you've got dead marine you've got a dead um, solar auxilia guy it, it again tells a bit of a story what's happening there it looks like the that maybe there's there's been a massive collapse and Kurz has come out of the rubble at the lion um in an ambush or it's, it's little things like that that you need to think about how does this tell a story because when people look at a miniature um that's what will really sell it lots of people can paint nice miniatures the real challenge is telling a story um and especially if you're going to go into a competition, this is very much going to be a competition piece, I think. It wasn't originally, but I'm probably going to go that route. There's there's lots of things to think about with it. Composition, story, um, smoothness isn't everything. So you can see at the back here, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy because I've built that up. The back section looks really weird now. So I've got two choices. I can either fill it all in. Or I can try and build it up so it looks like a pile of rubble. The problem is, is that's pretty much vertical. So it's never really going to make sense if I have a vertical pile of rubble with bits sticking out. It's just going to look a bit weird. So I'm going to fill that in with milliput and sand it down probably. But I'll you'll see that shortly. Just add into the whole story bit as well. I had to do the the chain that's on the running along the floor um, I had to do that off camera because it was an absolute nightmare but I actually wrapped the chain around the solar auxilia's leg now again thinking about story I'm looking at it going I have no idea how that's happened I've got no idea why that chain is wrapped around his leg he's now dead 
Um, but the reality is, is if I'm thinking that making it and I'm trying to work out why or how that's happened, then potentially someone else, and it's it's not just about judges, it's about everything. Like you, you create this for yourself, but you create it for others as well. If you're putting it on social media, you want people to look at it and go, well, what's happened there? Um, so the devil's in the details, it really is. I appreciate it's not the most exciting thing to see, but a lot of people ask me about how I get that nice shape to bases and that sort of stuff. So this is pretty much it. So I'm ramming that all full of milli putt. Um, and the reason why I use milli putt is, is it's, it's really easy to sand and get a nice finish and a nice transition from it, from the plinth. Um, the downside is, is milli putt doesn't stick very well. Um, so that can be a bit fiddly, but you can clearly see I'm going to fill it all with milli putt. I'm going to fill over those pipes that are there as well. I don't want to see those pipes. I'm going to fill around all the side. And then what you'll end up happening is that it will look like the plinth is just not a flat surface anymore. Right, so this is where we now need to solve the position of curves. I have to get that feet level. So what I decided to do in the end um, is add a piece of debris onto the concrete slab at an angle that fits his foot. Now it's a bit fiddly, but this is the only way that I could think of that would look natural and wouldn't mean that I have to change all of the concrete that I've done. So as you can see, I've slapped a bit of milli putt down. To be fair, green stuff would have been better for that bit because it would have been sticky. Um, but I've got some milli putt underneath um, and I've put used the milli putt to prop up the plaster card. And then I've stood curves on top and I've put some pressure on the milli putt, sorry, on the plaster card to put it in the right position. So that plaster card is now going to be sitting flush against his foot. Um, and then that means that his footing is going to look natural now as you can see towards the edge i'm adding some milli part i mess it all up in a minute with my fat fingers but um, i put some milli part uh, where the plaster card meets the concrete that just solves the the problem of it just looking a bit weird it looking out of place um, but i know how i'm going to fix it now this is where i mess it up There we go. Right. So um, now that it's in position, it's just a case of getting him so he sits perfect. And then once it's in the right position, you just put a little bit of super glue underneath. That will just hold the plastic card in place while the milli part all dries. Um, and that's how I solved it in this case. But there's lots of ways of doing it. It's whatever works for the base that you're working on. But yeah, really important. You lose immersion when is something like just just a foot doesn't sit properly it's it, it really does take away from a model and if you spend a lot of time on them um, you probably don't want to get caught up on something as trivial as that right so this is a really important stage so this is uh, I don't know what you'd call it a maybe integration stage so this is the point where you need to make sure that everything makes sense it all sits well together so remember i said um with the solio auxilia there's a gap under his back and his head where it doesn't sit properly with the base because it's obviously not sculpted for that so what i'm doing is again milli part i quite like milli part it's easy to work with for me um you don't have to use this sculpting tool anything will do a toothpick because um, you don't it doesn't need to be smooth or anything like that but basically any gaps i'm filling so in this case, the gap around the bottom of the solar auxilia, solar auxilia, um, I'm filling in. So you're you're just not gonna see it. And the whole point of that is just to fill the gap. You don't care about the finish. The milli part is going to be covered. Um, you're also gonna use the milli part to 
create more interesting shapes um, around the rubble especially. So you can see the edge really well. You can see the big gap between that Space Marine and that base. So perfect example, that needs to be filled. You can't have that. It's the same problem as a, a model's foot not connecting properly with a base. You need to hide it. So again, in this case, because we're not worried um, about the detail of it, it's gonna be, we're, we're gonna put some, some rocks and sand and stuff around it. All you wanna do is just fill it. And in all seriousness, like basing should be an enjoyable process. Um, it should be fun. Don't don't get too caught up about it. Just if it feels right, do it. Um, there are exceptions to that when when you're doing certain types of basing, but especially if you're doing something like a, a rocky base or a ruin base, the the more random you have it, the less perfect it is, the better it will be, um, because it shouldn't make sense the minute you start being really cautious about it that is the minute you start getting patterns um, and, and things start being symmetrical and you, you don't want that at all randomness is good So this is a really good viewpoint of what it looks like with all the milliput around. You can see how rough and horrible it looks. Um, you can see that I'm not being careful with it again. The the bumpier it is, the further out you come, it's just more shapes, it's just more interest, it's just adding details. So again, just enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. So with the mini putt down, it's, it would be quite easy just to cover it all now in your debris, um, in your sand, in your basing material, whatever you're using. But I think an important thing to remember with basing as well is everything happens in layers. Um, so this is a really good time to add some details. Like I, skulls don't really seem relevant in, in, in this, a bare skull. Um, but I like skulls on bases, especially 40K. It kind of, um, it's a GW thing. So uh, I'm slapping some some skulls in. I'm even gonna put the lion's helmet. Uh, oh, the lion's helmet's already on it. So I'm, I've put the lion's helmet on the base as well. Just sat in the milli part. And the reason why I'm putting it in the milli part is because then again, once you put the debris on, once you put your rubble, once you put your, your sand, your basing material, um, those things will be sat in that basing material so it's not going to look like it's floating Right, onto the finishing steps. So what we're gonna do next is PVA glue. Um, you can see I've added a couple of little bits like the damaged crossbar um, across the whole lot. I thought that was quite a nice touch, but. Um, right, so PVA glue. So I'm covering, it's worth noting here, I'm gonna cover all of the mini part. I don't wanna see any mini part. I also, any point 
uh, the milliput touches. So where the milliput meets the Space Marine here, for example, or where the milliput meets the Plasticard, I want PVA glue at the join point. I want to so any basing material that I put on. If I cover the mini part, I also want it to cover a little bit of the base. I also want it to cover a little bit of the marine. So you, 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 it gives you a nice soft transition. It gives you, you, you don't have any weird lines that you don't want. So glue's down, next up we're going to start adding some basing materials or rubble or debris or whatever. Now, it, really important here, the concrete slabs, one of the reasons why I like them again, they, they crumble, the, the ones from Juilia Scenics. So they give you these really nice shaped um, pieces of rubble, debris, um, and they give you lots of variation in shapes and also it ties in with what you've already put on the base. So first of all, I'm not gonna cover the whole thing because I want some variation. So I'm heavily sprinkling it over what I've what I've put on, where I've put the PVA glue. Um, so this will be the majority of what you see for when it comes to the rubble on the base. And there's no right or wrong here, it's what you like the look of. Um, yeah, if it looks good to you, then it's right. I mean, generally speaking, if something looks a bit off, you you know there's clearly a problem. You know when you look at something and you think there's something not right, well, that's the point where you need to solve it. But again, don't be too precious about it. Anything that goes wrong, it can be fixed. Um, don't worry about getting them on bits of the model that you don't want. You can easily wipe it off. I'm gonna show you how to do that at the end. Um, once you've done the the bits from the Juila Scenics. In this case I've got some old bits of sand. Uh, I think this is builder sand with some finer sand mixed in as well. It's just lots of different sizes. Um, I'm just going over what we've done just because it fills in the, the gaps that you've got left over and it adds some different sizes. It adds some variation in your rubble. Um, I know it seems complicated but it's really not, you just, variation really is such a big deal when it comes to basing. It makes a huge difference in believability. Um, and again, it's all about story with basing. What does that base tell you? Right, so next up, all those bits of the base where you've got sand and rubble that you don't want it, um, that brush that I used with the PVA glue, um, all I've done is dipped it in water. It's now just a plain old wet brush and anywhere where I don't want that sand, where I don't want the debris, where it's covered up too much detail, I'm just wiping it off. It's that simple. Um, as soon as the brush gets too dirty, wet it again and wipe it off. So for example, there's far too much sand all over the pipes, the sand, the, the basing material has gone too far up the side of the solar auxilia. It's gone too far up the side of the space marines. So all I'm doing, you can clearly see, I'm just rubbing it off with a wet brush while it's still wet. It really is that simple. And that's how you get a bit more control. So if anything looks a bit weird, this is where you can get rid of it. Or if you made any mistakes, that's how you get rid of it. Nice and easy.
Right, so a quick little tip here to help with integration. Um, there's two big points here that stand out, really bug me. The concrete slab is very empty. There's nothing on it, it's very flat and the same as where the line is gonna stand. Now, what looks like a dry brush is actually a brush with watered down PVA. And the point of that is, watered down PVA isn't gonna leave any weird textures. Um, so you go over the whole lot and just sprinkle a little bit of your fine debris, your fine basin material. Um, and all that's going to do is just, it just breaks up that flat monotony of nothing. Um, and it just looks a bit more natural. And that's it. You can clearly see, like, as I said, it doesn't come together till the end until you have that whole integration process where you add all of that basin material at the end it never looks right um, here's a video of the base primed when you prime the model that's always the test does the prime look good um, once you've primed it does that base make sense is there anything that stands out and just looks out of place that doesn't look like it should be there um, but you can clearly see this is it with Kurz and the lion in place they are blue tacked on rather badly but you can see all the details. Once we paint it, it should look good, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so that's the first video. I hope it was helpful. I apologize it was a bit longer than I planned, but actually um, there was a lot of footage that I didn't really want to cut out. So yeah, hope it was helpful. I hope you liked it. If you did, like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Any feedback on the video, that'd be great. This is one of the first that I've recorded, so definitely looking to improve. Thanks very much.